What is up, everybody? It's your boy Slim, aka Mr. Different. We're back with another product review today. We're gonna be taking a look at the V Collection by Arturia. Shout out to Arturia because Arturia is sponsoring this video. Uh, I have more details in the sponsorship with me and Arturia and the good things that's gonna come with my channel in the future but they have hit me up and wanted me to check out their v collection their new version i own the v collection but they just did an update to it and um uh, they wanted me to just go look at it and check it out you know do a review for you guys you know show off this great i think one of the greatest collection of plugins on the market right now for the price i mean the price is what's really amazing about this so i'm gonna take a look at all these plugins go over it. it's gonna be like a a, a demo it's not gonna be like a full in-depth but if there's any plugin that you particularly like and you want me to go more in depth about please leave a comment below and i will definitely um do a product review of that pro uh plugin review of that plugin um in a future video so just like i said let me know so what is arturia v collection 5 um basically matter of fact why don't i just pull up the website while we're should have had that already pulled up, but it'd been better if I had it. But basically, it is a collection of analog model plugins made by Arturia. And you get a total of 17 different plugins. As you can see, I got them all to their own channel. 17 different plugins right here. So it's basically 17 different plugins. Um, this is their website. Let's mute that, please. Um, it's $5.99, but you get 17 fully analog plugins model plugins some of the greatest analog gear of all time from jupiter to uh the mini mode to uh let's see we got rolling uh i think we got the matrix we got the profit we got stage pianos grand pianos i mean modular stuff uh got uh organs i mean you got everything i mean it's just got a bunch of stuff um and it just it's just a great collection of it as you can see i'm gonna go through each of them here so definitely go to the website put the link in below you can get more details so um if you're a fan of you know old school gear or analog sound or you don't want to buy the the real moog or anything like mini moog or anything like that um then yeah this is probably the best bet right here and even if you buy individual plugins it's still super cheap the individual plugins are dirt cheap i can say dirt cheap but they're so affordable but you know just buying the full collection just saves you a ton of money you know it's like it's great um so yeah as we go through, we're going to start with the first plugin, which is the Analog Lab 2, which I I got this with my keyboard a lot, and it's the, the cheapest of the um, bunch. But what the Analog Lab 2 is, is basically all the presets from all 17 instruments. So um, if you just want the presets and you don't want the actual individual instruments, get the Analog Lab 2. You get every last instrument, every last preset from the instrument. And, I mean, as you can see, if I go here, it's over 5,000 presets. So if you can't find something to use out of 5,000 presets, I don't know what to tell you because that's a lot of presets, you know what I'm saying? And with the new update, they have new classification and all that. And if you own this, say you're using the Arturia Lab right here and you own one of the plugins too, you can actually go in and um, bring up the plugin for that preset and tweak it to your liking. With Analog Lab 2, you can't do too much tweaking. It gives you a few little... Um, because your few little controls here, like resonance, cutoff, frequency, and all that. See, it's linked up with my um, my keyboard as well. Um, you get a few little presets there, but you know, if you're um, if you really want the full control, I highly suggest buying each individual one or just buying a V Collection version five. Um, so yeah, so uh, I'm not gonna play that sound. Let's go through each individual plugin now. So first off, we're gonna start with the ARP 2600V, which is a ARP 2600 emulation. Which is a semi is a semi modular um, synth, um, one of the greatest synths out there. It was like I think it was like the direct competitor to the um, the Mini Moog at the time. It was trying it was trying to be a competitor to them. Um, so yeah, and I think Core just remade it too. They remade this not the modular part, but they remade the ARP uh, synthesizer. So yeah, it's a great synthesizer. It has a unique sound to it and characteristic. Um, as you can see, it has a bunch of patch caves. And like I said, I'm not going too deep into it. It's kind of like a show and tell and then like a little sound demo, whatever. But yeah, as you can see, so I'll just play some of the sounds real quick. Um, what are some of the leads? So. And then I'll play some of the pads. Thank you. 
it's like a word or something. That's pretty cool. Um, Seagull says he was great for. And I use a lot of these, a lot of these arps in my trap beats, and I just uh, use the um, half speed with gross beats, and you know, made some crazy sounds with it. So yeah. Um, great plugin, as you can see, has a very unique old school sound, and I like it. Like I said, you want me to go more in depth about it, leave it in the description below, and I will try to do that. Um, next, we have the B3, which is a organ, which is, I mean, I love organ plugins, and this was no exception. So, I mean, it's basically an organ. You have different stuff like rotary speed. You have the different cabinets. You also got effects built into it. I mean, you can turn that, that fast rotary speed up, so you get that... Let's turn it on. And you get some different draw bars and all that. And it's just it's a it's a great plugin because you get so many different um styles built into it. If you're an organ nut like me. I mean you'll love it. Like I say you can overdrive it and Flanger, chorus, phaser, even delay. So, I mean, and then you can change the cabinets, of course. You got your reverb cabinet, change different effects on there, ensemble, king stuff. It's got some different uh, algorithms for that, the revo reverb impulses. And just a great plug-in for organ sound. So if you're an organ nut, definitely a great one right there. I love this one. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing, especially for trap music. Next up is the CS80, which I don't know too much about this. I don't know too much. I got to read more up about it, but um, I don't really use this one. I haven't used this one at all, but um, it looks like a simple old. It's obviously it's an analog synth, um, but it, I think it's a digital synth. I'm not mistaken. I think it's digital. Um, it might be analog. I got to do, do some more research about this one. Um, I never heard of this one. And I never used this one. I've never used this plugin, but I need to start because I mean, it probably got some good sounds in it. But as you see, it has your VCO, which is your voltage control oscillators, your VCF, which is your voltage control filters, and then your VCA, which is a voltage control amplifier. And then you have, you know, touch response and stuff like that. Different presets. You have sub oscillator, you can ring modulate it, detune it, of course. Um, you have, what else they got in this? An ar built in arpeggiator, so that's great. Um, just a great little synthesizer. I mean, it's a weird one. It's a little different. Uh, so you got square try. You can change between different saw uh, waveforms and all that, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, so I mean, it's, it's definitely a dope one. Let's play some of the effects. Let's play some of the presets. Great pad sounds. They got a little bit of arp right there. That could be a Metro booming dark trap beat right there. Um, you know. Just gonna show you how the presets can be a great start. So yeah, CS80. V, if you want to know more about it, leave it in the description below and I'll do more research about it and I'll break it down for you guys. You know, that's what it is. But definitely sounds great. I'm about to start messing with it myself now. Next is the Farfista V, which is kind of one old, it's like an old school piano, old school, I think digital piano replication of the Farfista. Um, I think this was used like the Beatles and stuff like that. If I'm not mistaken, around the 70s and stuff like that, 60s, 70s sound. So you want that kind of Beatle kind of old school sound. I think this is where you can get it from, if I'm not mistaken. So. And it has, oh, I was going to say, if you need to resize it, you can resize the windows to whatever size you want. Um, that's just too big. But if you got like a 4K display or anything like that, you can resize it to kind of match your display. Um, you got different stuff like the, you got the bass, you got tremolo, you have uh, repeat. You have different type of effect. You got your strings, flutes, chords. I mean, you got some great presets right here. Like I said, this is back, like, I guess it's like an old school sampler. Like, this is like the old school samplers right here. So that's what this was. But, you know, 
and also it has the different effects and all that as well. There your Beatles sound right there. I mean, you know, you got the little fuzz with it. But yeah, it just has it has an old school characteristic, just like all the other stuff it has its own sound to it. So that's the Farfetch the V. Next we have the Jupiter 8 V, which is my favorite analog synth of all time. The Jupiter 8. I mean, you can't go wrong with this. Cost about ten thousand dollars <laughs> for the real one, but the Jupiter 8 was like one of the best synths ever made, in my opinion. Um, I wish I could own one. Um, it really modern. It really revolutionized the way sound was. Um, just for the fact how it used the ease of use and the features that had came with it, and it was used on so many records. Uh, and one of my favorite TV shows on Netflix, Stranger Things, they use a bunch of Jupiter and Roland. Uh, they use a bunch of Roland, uh, what you call it, Roland synthesizers. And the Jupiter Eight was definitely was that was one of them. So I love this synth. I I love this. I love it. Probably the best Jupiter emulation from buying a real one, in my opinion. So yeah, I'm just gonna be a fanboy there. I mean, and you can just hear the old at stop, damn it. Will you, will you stop, please? Thank you. Um, but you can just hear the old school analog sound, right? It just it just has its own sound, and it's one of my favorite. I use it on a bunch of my tracks because it just it is it is, it is amazing. That's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say. Jupiter 8 V. Um, next up is the Matrix V. Matrix 12. Um. And this is one of them. This is, I think this get this got into like the more digital era of synthesizers back in the old school digital stuff. Back when they started using DCOs instead of VCOs. I think this actually used to use VCOs, but it was still digitally controlled. So that way you can bring up presets and all that. Um, this has a very unique sound. It's very complicated looking. You got two filters. I mean, you got two VCOs or two, you know, oscillators. You have modulation feature matrix. You have tracking LFO lag. You even have an FM built into it which is pretty cool. Um, so it was a very complicated, I guess it looks complicated, but you can get some really unique organic kind of movement with your sound. So and you can also change the, I like, see they had the, the majors where you can, you know, like, uh, uh, what's that plug in serum. How you got the different mod, the, the matrix where you can modulate different stuff. You can do it right there. It's pretty cool. And then you got, crazy stuff there. So let's go through some of the sounds. Yeah, if you're looking for the crazy movement type of sounds, that's definitely a great one to get right there. Next up is the Mini V, which you all probably should know this one. This is basically a Mini Moog. Um, a Mini Moog. I said, my bad, I said Moog. It's Moog. Bob Moog, not Bob Moog. Moog. Um, but, um, it's a Mini Moog. Um, definitely one of the most iconic 
pieces of gear from, you know, Michael Jackson, Stevie Wonder, and a ton of other people, rock and roll, country. I mean, so many people use the mini, use the, um, the mini Moog. Um, I mean, there's nothing as much to say about it. It is what it is. And this probably is my favorite out of all the emulations out there. There's definitely one by Native Instruments, and uh, there's one called The Legend. There's one by uh, Yuhi Diva and all that. I think that's one called. But this is probably my favorite because it, it's, it's the closest to it, in my opinion. You know, but they each had their own sound. But this, to me, sounds closest to it. So, you know, if you don't know what this is, you need to do your research. This is like one of the most legendary synths of all time. And you can they remade it date to this day with different features in it, and it's still on a bunch of tracks. So let's just go through. <laughs> And it's great. You also have an art feature in this too, which the old one doesn't have. So that's kind of cool as well. Oh, and a bunch of movies and stuff that uses for sound design and stuff as well. I mean, it's, it's it's mostly known for the basses. And it is a mono sense, so there is no playing chords with this, which, you know, it has that nice little, you know, where you can play two notes and it kind of glides between the two and shifts between because it's a mono sim. I think you can't switch it to polyphonic because it's a VST and you can do that. But if you want the real authentic, you know, sound of it, you wouldn't switch it to polyphonic. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a great one. Another legendary one is the modular V, which is the Moog modular, a Moog, my bad, the Moog modular, which is the one of the most expensive since I was saying. I think a cheap, the cheapest you can buy them is like 20K, 10K, 20K, something like that. Um, the cheapest one you can buy is basically a modular scent built by Moog. Um, built Moog, Moog. I'm just gonna, you know what I mean. It's Moog or Moog, I, I, whatever. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna stop messing the name up. Um, but yeah, it's basically a modular scent, meaning you have to plug and patch in there. Um, I did a review on it, I did a video of me showing you how to do it, but you want me to go more in depth with it? I will. Um, I'm a big fan of modular stuff. Uh, I'm trying to get into it myself, uh, but modular costs a lot of money. So why not learn how to do modular through VSTs at first and then, you know, work my way on down. So, yeah, um, it's, that's all it is. You got different VCOs, different VCAs, different uh, VCFs. You have an arpeggiator sequencer right here. You got different envelopes and sound controls and stuff like that and key tracking. You can just patch it in and make your own crazy sounds. Uh, I'm not going to play this because I didn't did a video about it, but it's great. If you want to learn modular, it's very fun to play around with and patch and make weird sounds and mess up. Modular scents are just amazing. Um, next up is the Piano V, which I did a video about. Um, basically, it is what it is. It is a piano plug-in. Probably a really good one, too. It's not the best, but it's really damn good. I still think Keyscape is probably the best, but I love Piano V, and I... I still use it because it has some different features that it, the piano V doesn't have. You can def, you can do a lot of stuff with like different type of piano. So you can change the, the, the piano type. You can change the mic placement and the room placement. I also have built an EQ, which is great. And there are different um, pianos that you can choose from, which if it let me choose different pianists. Here you go. You can choose different pianos from upright pianos. to pop pianos, pop brands, to metal piano, which is a metal grand. Jazz, let me, uh, glass is my favorite one. Just weird. You can change different aggregator for your reverb. So you can do large space, nice plate, 
a wooden place or room. I mean, you can really just tailor it and make your own sound. So it's really good for that. Um, if you need a piano plugin, it's definitely great because they're different sounds. Um, they like said there are better piano plugins out there, but for the price and the sound it gives you and the control on top of that, you can't go wrong with it. And I mean, you really can't. Next up is the Prophet V, which is basically based off the Prophet. Um, another legendary, uh, another legendary uh, synthesizer. Um, great sound, really good. I like it a lot. Uh, I mean, if you get a real Prophet, it sounds great. Um, but you know, just just as good. This is very simple in my opinion um, because it has it's very simple controls. You know, just your filters, your oscillators, your filter. Um, your filter attack the case stain and release and it has an amplifier and you got LFO. It's very simple. You make very simple sounds with it, but it has two versions of it. You have the, the profit five, you have the VS and you have the five VS, which is basically both of them put together. So you can get some pretty interesting sounds right there. And it sounds really good. Oh, some very interesting combinations right there with both of them. You can just play around and, you know, get some unique sounds. Got a few more to go. Got the SEMV, which is, I think, a Oberheim. I think it's made by Oberheim, if I'm not mistaken. But very simple, very simple, very non complicated synthesizer. If you want a simple synthesizer that's old, that has an old school analog sound, this is probably the way to go. It has a sub oscillator, two VCOs, VCF. Um, LFOs, of course, uh, amp envelopes, tuning, portamento, and an arpeggiator. So very simple, very straightforward as some effects on the side, overdrive, course, and delay. And I mean, you really can't make a bad sound with this because how simple it is. You know, so very simple right there. Um, I don't use it too much because, I mean, you can get by with other stuff. But if you're looking for one to start off with that's simple to get in the sound design, it's a pretty good one, in my opinion. The Salona V, which is, I have no idea what this is modeled after. I do re there's another one I got to do my research on, like the, um, like the uh, what you call it, the other plugin we looked at. <laughs> but it's I use it in one of my beats, and it's weird it's i think it's a sampler as well it's a uh, old school sampler so it mostly does strings violins horns trumpets stuff like that nature but it's more it's still, it got a more digital um synthesized sound not more of a natural synth, um, sampler sound but it's very simple very cutthroat nothing special to it um it has other features once you bring it up you can see your, your envelope your bass selection your um resonance and effects so you know you got different features for there but at the front of the surface very simple very easy to get a sound going right there so definitely cool um Need to look into it more if I use myself. Next is the Stage 33, which is a stage piano, which I think is a um, an elect E piano. Um, let me make it a little smaller for you guys. Um, definitely is a dope one. Um, if you like E pianos, it's another great one. You could change. It has the cabinet where you can change the cabinets. Has different effects. And you can also go from a stage piano to a suitcase piano. So. And it just have a different tone once you do that, you know. Um, just have a different tone, and it works really good. And you can also go under the hood and do some extra stuff, which I'm not going to. But if you're trying to do that jazzy type of soulful type of music, this is definitely one to pick up. And E-Pianos definitely make that type of sound. Do you 
little trap soul, you know. Tell you can't go wrong with it. So definitely a great E piano right there. Next up is the Saint Claver, I think it's called uh, Saint Claver, Claver. Weird one. This is a definitely a weird one. I played with this a little bit. You want some crazy sounds? This is definitely one to go with. It's I don't understand it too much. Like I said, I got to play around. I kind of play with all these myself, but it can do some crazy sound effects. <laughs> That was the FM stuff right there. Mmm. Okay. I'll make some meat meal stuff right now after that watch. <laughs> but yeah, great sound thing. If you want me to go more in depth about it, let me know. I said it has a bunch of stuff under the hood, and I would, you know, break it down. And also has this other function here, which I don't get quite yet so but i will break it i will learn it for you guys if you guys want me to so just let me know <laughs> um the vox continental which is another kind of uh digital i this is like a digital organ i said back in that kind of beatles era the 70s stuff like that That Beatles sound, that 70s sound, can't go wrong with it. It's very simple. It has different sound characteristics to it. More distorted stuff. Let's see. You have your rotary speed, your cabinets, your foot pedals, your draw bars, and you can pick, you know, you want to split it, multi, all that good stuff. And it's just it's a great, it's another one of the great things. Um, that plus the, the uh, B3 by um, Arturia, definitely great. And they, you know, have their own sounds depending on what sound, sound you're going for. I so say you want to go to that old school 70 sound. It's a great one to get. And last but not least is the Whirlit Soar, the Whirlit, which is a Whirlit Soar um, emulation, which is another electric piano. But as a it's like that Erica Badu type feel to it, which is great for you know, like say your soulful type of stuff. It comes with a reverb, different effects. The reverb is like, I think it's based off the um, the Lexicon reverb too, which is pretty cool. So that's pretty interesting. You know, the Lexicon's a very good reverb. And then you got different effects you can play in there. So you play in some flanger, some chorus, some delay, some overdrive, and some pitch shift. Even a vocal filter, which is pretty cool. Then um, you got your, uh, your vibrato, so. Make it, you know, do the little wobble. And then you can go under the hood and do some extra stuff as well and, you know, take away the foot noise. One thing I like to do is take away that pedal noise because I don't like the pedal noise personally. And so, yeah, um, very dope. Very nice. If you're trying to get your soulful cell phone right there. So, yeah, I know it's a long video, but that's just an overview of all the plugins. If there's anyone that you particularly want me to go over, please leave a like and uh, leave a comment in the description below. And I definitely do that. I want to say shout out to Arturia once again for letting me do this and, um, you know, don't me to check it out. I will be doing more beat making videos with these plugins also so you can see me how I use them in my own production. Oh, God, not my mic over. Whoa. So. Yeah, just want to let you guys know that. So hope you guys enjoyed. Check it out. Link in the description below to Arturia's website where you can read up on all these yourself and learn a little bit more yourself and try them out. Demo them. Try them out. If you like them, get it. If you don't, then that's on you, but you're missing out. Great deal. 17 plugins for a very, very affordable price. So with that being said, hope you guys enjoy. Like always, you know who it is. Your boy Slim, a.k.a. Miss Different. Not motivated by the money, but the like, comment, subscribe, and views. With that being said, I will catch you guys in the next video. Have a good one.